Hi everyone, I've got an interesting question for you. Why did Jesus weep at the death of Lazarus? This is a question that recently came up and I want to address it today. And it's very interesting because think about this. Lazarus, he's been dead for four days. But Jesus knew that he would resurrect him. So why did Jesus cry? Well, let's go directly to the Bible. John 11 verse 17. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. So there's no doubt, Lazarus is dead. Verse 18, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. You see, here she didn't understand what he was really saying. Jesus here knew that he would resurrect Lazarus. So he didn't cry because he was dead. Let's continue. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now the next part is important, so listen carefully. Verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus wept. Verse 36, so the Jews said, see how he loved them. You see, even the Jews didn't understand yet. When Jesus saw Mary, Martha, the other Jews there, he saw their pain, the pain of loss. That's why he was moved, deeply moved in his spirit, not because Lazarus died, but because of them, the people there. He understood what they were going through. So if you lost someone, someone dear to you, they know that Jesus, he knows exactly how you feel. Let's continue. Verse 37, but some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. How amazing is that? It was important for Jesus to show his glory by bringing Lazarus back from the dead so everybody could see it. But Jesus was moved with compassion. And that is why he cried. When he looked at the people and the pain that they were going through, he understood it. He felt it with them. And that is why he wept. 
1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, Casting all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. If you're going through tough times, if you have a lot of pain that you're carrying with you, please know that God cares for you. He wants you to bring that pain to Him. So all you got to do is talk to Him about it. Cast all your anxieties on Him. The Psalm 147 verse 3, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. You know, at times you might even doubt God, that He cares for you and that He will take care of you. You might doubt Him when you go through difficult times, when you feel like there's no way out anymore and you can't handle everything on your own anymore. But you know, He won't let you go through things that you cannot handle. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. And He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Whenever I'm going through tough times, this verse comes to mind. And I know instantly, whew, you know those moments where you feel like, man, I can't handle this anymore. This is too much for me to deal with. It's, it's too much to bear, this heavy load. And then this verse comes to mind. Uh -uh. Daniel, you're lying to yourself. God will never give you something, an experience or a situation that is too much for you to handle. And even if it is, He will show you a way to escape so that I can endure it. I wrote this verse on my heart and I know as I'm standing here today, He will never leave me and never forsake me. He cares about me, He loves me and He will take care of me because Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. You got to understand, having hope in God is not a blind, being blind and just jump into the air and hope that you don't fall. No, it is believing and trusting in God to be there for you all the time. Biblical hope is taking God's promises and trusting that He will do what He said He will do. It is taking God on His word. So whenever you are experiencing difficult times, don't go by your feelings. Don't listen to these whispers of the devil in your ear. Go just on the Word of God. Study God's promises. Write it on your heart and then live by it. Always trust Him in whatever challenges you might face in this temporary world. And always remember the bigger picture. Romans 8 verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Always remember to keep your eyes on the prize, on Jesus Christ. Do not be distracted by the temporary problems of the world, by the schemes of the devil. And remember to always keep your eyes on God Himself, on the things above. See the bigger picture that even in this temporary world, sometimes God will test you. James 1 verse 2, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And 1 Peter 5 verse 10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't be like Peter. When he walked on the water, he walked when he looked at Jesus. But then, as soon as he started to look at the water, the problem, the crisis in his life, he started to sink. Don't be like him. Don't be distracted. But keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Trust him always because he is bigger than your highs and your lows. The issues that you will face in this life, the mountains for you, it's mountains for God is nothing. He can deal with it easily. But a lot of times he wants you to go through it so that he will change you. You're not going to be changed 
if you never go through difficult situations, if everything just always goes perfect. No, change your mind. Look at your problems in a different way and say, God, all right, here's an issue. How do you want me to deal with this? Don't sink. Don't be like Peter. Don't be distracted. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ because he is bigger than your highs and your lows. And if you want to grow stronger, to be able to really trust God in every circumstance that he put you in, watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my